somebody in the White House over there is taking note. Yeah. Somebody well, let the old I, uh, man know that no, there's a lot of people out Moscow there today who like want talks kind of now, of ceasefire now. Did I mention that all wars are bankers' wars? With the money we sent to Ukraine, we can hire an entirely separate new police force to protect us from the current police force. <laughs> and they don't want us to join together. And I have one message for the right and the left. If everybody on the right could just realize that not everybody on the left likes Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, we just want to end the wars and have health care that doesn't bankrupt us, that would go a long way. And if everybody on the left could just realize that not everybody on the right is a white supremacist Trump or gun nut, they're just fucking gun nuts. I love you, love each other. Come together. I'll see you at the next anti war rally. Congressman Dr. Ron Paul.
no boundary to the depravity of our own government. They would never do that. Has been violated repeatedly to the point that we can be almost certain that if we, the people, don't step in, we are headed over the cliff to nuclear annihilation. We are here because we've been living a lie, as poor Lady Macbeth discovered. Once you commit one crime, tell one lie, it multiplies until you reach your tragic end. Unless you choose not to be tragic. We are here because we choose not to be tragic. The lying began at the end of World War II, at the death of FDR. We were told it was necessary to drop not one, but two nuclear bombs on Japan. It was not. The Emperor of Japan was already negotiating the terms of surrender through the Vatican. Our VE Day celebration of the defeat of the Nazis, which could not have happened without the enormous sacrifice of the Russian people, short-lived, and instead of eradicating Nazism, the Dulles brothers, among others, protected Nazis in pockets, in our intelligence agencies, and in other nations in the name of fighting communism. Then we had the assassination of our president, John F. Kennedy and the lie of the magic bullet shot by one lone assassin who apparently also killed Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, and Robert Kennedy. Then we had 9-11, allegedly perpetrated by some guy suffering kidney failure from a cave in Afghanistan. So today, we have the lie that one fine morning, President Vladimir Putin woke up and said, gee, I feel like invading Ukraine today. And idiots in our Congress who knew or should have known better decided to send over a hundred billion dollars to a pro to a pro-Banderist regime in Kiev, which we created to wage a proxy war against a nuclear superpower. And now we have the lies about the menacing Chinese balloons. This will not end unless we stop it by standing for the truth. And the truth is that mankind deserves better. There is a movement afoot, a revival of the non-aligned spirits, spirit where nations are uniting, as in the BRICS, the SCO, the Eurasian Economic Union, in a new order based on mutual respect and a commitment to eradicate the common causes of the enemies of mankind, such as poverty, disease, and hunger, without sacrificing sovereignty. Rather than try to crush this new paradigm, the United States should join it. Millions are suffering in our own nation because of our foolish insistence on being the global hegemon. The Pope has offered the Vatican for peace talks without preconditions. President Lula of Brazil has proposed founding a block of nations to create a peace organization. 
I, along with Halgad Zepp LaRouche, who you heard, support these calls for negotiations. It doesn't matter if you like or dislike the initiators. of Marian Anderson, who in spite of the ugly racism which had prevented her from singing at Constitution Hall 84 years ago, accepted the invitation of Eleanor Roosevelt to sing here on these steps on Easter Sunday, 1939. To the amazement of all, she began the program by singing, My Country Tis of Thee, Sweet Land of Liberty, Let Freedom Ring. Well, that was awesome. How was that? Oh, 
there was a Ukrainian commander that was interviewed by the We would be investigating, not celebrating. the last correspondent that went in on behalf of the So I just want to add, the nuclear threat produced by all of this is an emergency warning in this world. And we are all in the crosshairs of this emergency. And like, I'm with you to rally. I actually had a rally yesterday. Which is all ready for the day. The bottom line is this.
with a pair of cojones smaller than a mothball that love to send people to go die. How about Bill Clinton? Every time he got caught with his pants down, it's bombs away on the Baghdad. How about the Nobel Peace of Crack Prize winner, Barack Obama? I want that guy who saw that out of it. No, no, you have to say it properly, Sandy. You said it like you're Italian. Assad has to go. Gaddafi has to go. We have to murder all of these people all over the world. And I'm going to bring the troop surge in and I'll win a Nobel Peace Prize. But you have to do it properly. You have to keep saying folks. Folks, folks. And that's all he did was focus. <laughs> I am angry at the mainstream media prostitutes. These little media whores yes. get paid to put out by the corporate pimps and their government whoremasters. Thank you. All they do is keep selling war, hate, fear, and hysteria. They ban us who speak for peace, love, facts, and freedom. The big story, the big story making the news. Vice President Kamala Harris announced that the United States formally determined that Russia committed crimes against humanity. Hey, Harris. Did you like the Iraq war? How many people did Mr. Stein say America was killed? How about those crimes against humanity? Woo! Thank you. And where's the Cartoon News Network, CNN, oh, showing everything the crap spewing out of Kamala's mouth, but never showed every day of Americans being slaughtering people all over Iraq. They never showed the Americans 20-year war in Afghanistan slaughtering people every day. But every day they have the Ukraine war. Every day they're media pimps. I am angry. Yep, because anger looks for the good of justice and the Congressional Crime Syndicate running and ruining America by their constant warmongering deeds is immoral. They call where we are Washington. Guess what? Washington must be turning in his grave to see the little freaks that they call Congress
When I look out here, my friend Barry Crimmins, who was a hilarious and he was a courageous comedian, he was a staunch critic of the U.S. government. If he was alive, I'm sure he'd be here today. People would always ask him, hey, if you don't like America so much, if you're such a critic, why don't you move to another country? And he said, I would, but then I'd become a victim of our foreign policy. Joke worked twice. He used to say there's a reason why there's no viable third party in America. It's because corporations don't want to cut a third check. <laughs> and that's a shame because the two parties in America that we have just ain't cutting it. They both support sending over a hundred billion dollars to Ukraine. We could have spent that money saving lives with universal health care, but instead we spend that money taking lives overseas, which is our specialty. We send them what we call foreign aid. Foreign aid, that's money to another country. We drop care packages on their heads from the sky, but it's not full of food. And, it's, and the only money we have left over, we're gonna spend shooting down hobby balloons. Can you imagine if the Independence Day was just about balloons? I mean, the movie, right? The aliens are invading and man, they are taking their time. At least Macy's figured out how to make a balloon look like somebody. They could attack us with Superman or something. With Mickey Mouse's adorable ears he's dropping on our cell phone conversations being so much worse than the NSA? I don't think so. Do you know we can end this war today through diplomacy, but our politicians want to enrich weapons manufacturers so they keep donating to them to the tune of $100 billion. become mafia states. The military industrial complex and the Ukraine war represent an orgy of looting and corruption. America is the most powerful mafia that has ever existed. And the hitmen in that mafia have military pilot licenses. The difference, we won't, the difference between our government these days and the mafia in the 1940s well, the Mafia in the 1940s helped defeat the Nazis. They used law shortage and union leaders. It's a sad day when you can't even trust the Mafia anymore. Do you know what America really needs? We need to take the money out of Ukraine and give it to everybody here so we can buy a balloon and a gun. 
It's the only way we can settle this. We all need to be floating around shooting each other down out of the sky. Better yet, the guns shoot vaccine syringes. Yeah, that's America. Eat boosters, you motherfuckers. America is so corrupt, even our war, our, uh, our peace prize winners are war criminals. Barack Obama won a peace prize and he immediately ramped up the war in Afghanistan, starting bombing Libya, put a hit on Osama bin Laden, dropped 26,000 bombs in Syria. And that's the thing about those peace prizes. Nobody ever tries to win a second one. with that hundred billion dollars instead of spend, sending it to Ukraine for killing people. Instead of sending money to Ukraine, we could get a President Biden a dog that knows where to lead him when a press conference is over. We sent enough money to Ukraine to buy everybody a tank of gas. For all the money we've given to Ukraine, do you know how many eggs we could buy? Almost a dozen. <laughs> With a hundred billion dollars, you know they can say you can end homelessness for 20 to 40 billion dollars. We could have ended homelessness, then restart homelessness, then say we were only kidding, and then end it again. <laughs> We, we can't end homelessness in America. We can't even fix the bridges that the homeless people live under. That's how corrupt we are. Every American for a hundred billion dollars could have had a home, but it's way more important that we make sure nobody in Ukraine has a home because now it's gonna be turned into a crater. We could give every homeless person in America $160,000. Or, if you want to help Americans but still show our support for Ukraine, we could buy every homeless person in the United States 7,000 Ukraine flag fleece blankets. We could have used that $100 trillion. $100 billion would have provided universal health care to all the people in Algeria, Botswana, Morocco, Rwanda, the Philippines, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Romania, Croatia, Mexico, and Peru. Oh, wait. Those countries already have universal health care. My bad. For the $100 billion, we could buy two FTX collapses. For $100 billion, we could buy every person on Earth a blue check mark on Twitter. Because shouldn't we all have an equal opportunity to be insufferable assholes? For $100 billion, we could get Chick-fil-A to stay open on Sundays and perform gay weddings. For $100 billion, we could buy an entire separate Russian invasion of Ukraine and have enough left over to pay Hunter Biden's monthly salary for the rest of his life. For $100 billion, we could break the Bank of England three times. We could buy every man, woman, and child in America an opportunity to pick something really nice from the Goop catalog. I know how you get that joke. We, for a hundred billion dollars, we could have the entire cast of Shark Tank dropped into an actual Shark Tank. We could pay for 90 Alex Jones lawsuits. We could buy a shit ton of balloons to spy on China and still have enough money left over for complete regulatory capture. Isn't that special? So you would say war is We could have gotten like five experimental drugs approved. For a hundred billion dollars, we can remake the Marvel Avengers movie with the entire original cast, but as a porno. We could do that 90 times over. We could have spent that money on transportation, high-speed rail, but it was more important to fund the people who duct take somebody to a lamppost with their pants pulled down. We could cure cancer, but Big Pharma wouldn't be happy with that because they prefer six people instead of healthy ones. With the money we sent to Ukraine, we can hire an entirely separate new police force to protect us from the current police force. We could have funded everyone having a free college instead of buying a Mount Kilimanjaro's worth of blow for Zelensky. 
Why are we sending that money to Nazis in Ukraine it, when we could be funding Nazis here in America yeah. struggling to buy eggs? <laughs> Isn't that just like our government to neglect all the Nazis we have here in America? <laughs> this is really a fight over nuclear war. Just across the road, there's a statue of Albert Einstein, and man, he looks depressed. He once said, if I could do it all over again, I'd be a plumber. You know why he said that? I thought it was because his toilet was always backed up. And it was because the military industrial complex used his science to kill people. They took Einstein's discovery and used it to melt the skin of Japanese civilians. Entire cities full of children and animals, extinguished in less than a minute. Generations poised, poisoned by radiation. Bombs today are much more powerful than those bombs we dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And I know there's some people who wouldn't show up to this peace rally, this anti-war rally, because of some of the speakers they didn't like on this stage. And I know what they're saying. They're saying, hey, I want to help stop a nuclear war, but not with those people. <laughs> I get it, I'm the same way. My house caught on fire a couple of months ago, and when the firemen showed up, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's your views on Social Security and Medicare? I mean, I get this is a scary situation, my house is on fire, but first I need to get your stance on LGBTQ and gender-affirming surgery. I know my house is burning down, but are you vaxxed? I need to see proof of at least one booster. I need to know what your position is on gender affirming surgery. What age should it start and what's your cutoff? And they're standing there looking at me like I'm fucking crazy. I guess you don't get to put out my fire then and my house is gonna burn down. I hope you're happy. So when people give me a litmus test and they ask me what kind of lefty am I, I always say I'm a Sandy Koufax lefty. Okay. When it comes down to survival, which this is, there is no gift basket with a card thanking you for your participation. You don't get everything attended to like in a hotel, but maybe you do get to survive. And that's the whole point. Save the nitpicking for Whole Foods. The people who won't be attending today had never any intentions of doing so. And if it wasn't one of the speakers, it would have been the weather. It would have been because they have more important things to do than survive. They'll be home watching CNN not cover this all day. The people who don't want to attend this rally because they don't like a speaker reminds me of what W.C. Fields said, that he won't drink water because fish fucking it. <laughs> you have to work with people you disagree with big time, even sometimes people you hate, because we need each other to survive. I'm reminded of the words of Frederick Douglass who said, I will join with anyone to do good, but with no one to do bad. If Black Panthers can march hand in hand with the KKK down Las Vegas Boulevard to get welfare payments reinstated, we can join hands with the right wing, the libertarians, the left, the socialists, the communists, everybody to stop a nuclear war. And what's happening right here at this rally is what actually scares the hell out of the establishment. Everybody from the left, everybody from the right, everybody from the middle coming together to realize that we have more in common than divides us and we share a common enemy. That enemy is the military industrial complex and the oligarchy. The same oligarchy that did a controlled demolition of our economy and then they want me to hate my neighbor for the pain I'm feeling because of that because they wouldn't attack a vaccine that didn't work the way they said it did in the first fucking place. Well, I'm not going to hate my neighbor. I'm going to love my neighbor.
because my neighbor is suffering under the same oligarchy that I'm suffering under, and he didn't cause it. The oligarchy did, and they don't want us to join together. And I have one message for the right and the left. If everybody on the right could just realize that not everybody on the left likes Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, we just want to end the wars and have health care that doesn't bankrupt us, that would go a long way. And if everybody on the left could just realize that not everybody on the right is a white supremacist Trump or gun nut, they're just fucking gun nuts. I love you, love each other. Come together. I'll see you at the next anti war rally. Stay together.
talk to each other are all organized for this common purpose. Thank you guys for having us. So with any show that I do, my goal is to get you really pissed off. And then at the end, it's really good. Oh, sure, I can cut it
235. 
nuclear destroy it, live to the deaths of billions, literally billions of excess deaths in the 1990s. He also, in the election of 1996, who had an army of Americans to afford his skills.
the U.S. did so much to cause this war and prevent earlier talks to end it, they must be made to seek compromise now. The former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mike Mullen, and the current chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, have both said that it's time for Ukraine to quit this war while they're behind before they get too much further behind. Officials told the Washington Post two months ago that they understand Ukraine cannot win this war. They just want to prolong it a little bit longer before the peace talks. Well, that's just not good enough. You are the problem. They cannot win. They should be talking to end the war now. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Now, some of the women earlier wrote a study for 2019 put out by the RAND Corporation, who is called Extending Russia or Overextending Russia. It was all about how to provoke Russia into expensive new commitments in Syria, in Central Asia, and in Ukraine. But the point I want to bring up to you from that RAND study that was pleasantly surprising to me was how often they bring up the importance of public opinion in that study. Well, we would like to do X, but the people of Germany are against it. We'd like to do Y, but the people of France won't stand for it. We think we'd like to push this far, but public opinion polls in America say that the people will not tolerate. And you might not have thought that they cared about what we thought at all. They do. They know that we have the power to make them stop. So it is up to us, the American people. Our government is risking a nuclear war over a country they're not even willing, so far, to deploy ground troops to. It's madness. We, the people, demand talks. Negotiate now. End this war. Thank you. courage that everyone in the government, everyone in the military industrial complex needs to show. And that is Anne Wright, because in 2003, in the lead up to the Iraq war, Anne resigned from the State Department. She resigned rather than go along with the Iraq war. That's what, that's the kind of courage we need. The kind of courage that Snowden showed, that so many others have shown, that have stepped down. Anne, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, thank you.
this war that's going on in Ukraine. So we got a lot of work to do. There are lots of there are lots of countries that are saying we don't want to have this war going on because we know what can happen. It can be a, a war that starts over the whole world. I mean, the use of nuclear weapons that's already been talked about. When the elephants are stomping around, it's the little people that get hurt, and it's all us little people all over the world get hurt unless we can get this thing stopped. So the reason we're here is saying that there need to be negotiations. I mean, there needs to be talk, there needs to be dialogue. It sounds kind of simple. It's kind of like school, isn't it? You know, when the bullies start pestering people, you have to sit them down and let's talk this thing out. So what can you do to do? Well, if you're going to be in town on Tuesday, you can join us in the U.S. Congress and go after our Congress people that are just as big a war mongers as every one of these administrations, presidential administrations. It doesn't matter whether it's a Republican or Democrat administration, they're all for war. They're all for the merchants of death to give them money to keep their campaigns going. So if you're in town at 930 on Tuesday, join us over at the Rayburn Building. And we will go to the offices of a lot of Congress people. So please join us there. And at the end of this, I will just say, no more war! No more war! No more war! No more war! Thank you very much. of the Combo Couch, Pasta Jardula. Pasta, it's yours. Take it away, man. Yo, let's give it up for Nick Prada and Angela for putting this on. And let's go with the flow. Free Julian Assange. Free Julian Assange. Say it again, free Julian Assange. Free Julian Assange. All right, before we get started, and everybody take their phone out really quickly and uh, mark yourself safe from a Chinese spy balloon. Can you do that? General Smedley Butler out here. Right? I can't believe nobody's even mentioned him today. War is a racket. He gave a speech almost 90 years ago, and uh, General Smedley Butler was a senior Marine Corps officer who fought both the Mexican Revolutionary War and World War I. At the time of his death, Butler was the most decorated Marine in U.S. history. During his 34-year career, he participated in military actions in the Philippines, China, Central America, the Caribbean, and France. But later in his years, Butler became an outspoken critic of the wars and their con consequences. In 1935, he gave this beautiful speech called, War is a Racket. Just gonna read the first paragraph. It says, War is a Racket. It has always been. It is possibly the oldest and easiest, most profitable, surely the most vicious. It is the only one international in scope. It is the only one which profits are reckoned in dollars and losses in lives. A racket can be best described as something that is not what it seems to the majority of people. It is only a small inside group that knows what it's about. It is conducted for the benefit of the very few, and at the expense of the many. Out of war, few people make huge fortunes. And the crazy thing is, is it's the same today as it was back then. War is still a racket. After there was a racket in Vietnam, when the government lied to us about the Gulf of Tonkin. False flags incite and appear to justify war. Don't be fooled, they're still doing it today. But companies like Dow Chemical made millions producing, producing dangerous gases used to suffocate and kill the women and children of Vietnam, destroy their agriculture and their civilization. Has anybody ever heard of napalm? Dow Chemical. And did I mention that all wars are bankers wars? Yeah. Let me hear you say it, all wars are bankers wars. And war is still a racket. As it was in Nicaragua when the CIA conducted a civil war by selling crack cocaine in the United States. They killed black people at home and brown people in Latin America. 
The prison industrial complex exploded. It's increased almost 700% since the 1970s with mandatory minimums. Tell me, is war still a racket? And did I also mention that all wars are bankers' wars? They you damn straight over there. And war is still a racket. The same way it was in Iraq. When people refused to, to, to deal with the fact that Saddam did not have chemicals or weapons. Okay? One man tried to stop the war, but it didn't happen. So I say all wars are still bankers' wars, are they not? You damn straight. Now the first thing we have to do is realize that we have no friends here in Washington. For we have a Congress that is more like professional wrestling. The Democrats. And no, let me say this much, they are not the lesser of two evils. These parties, they appear to be oppositions, but they're really not. And what are the Democrats? They are the, let's send weapons to Ukraine Democrats, the let's invade Haiti Democrats, the let's sanction the hell out of Syria Democrats, the, oh, I like this one, the we came, we saw, he died Democrats. <laughs> they're also, the CIA and the FBI are now the good guy Democrats. <laughs> Basically, they are the Trump derangement syndrome Democrats. In other words, they're just the synthetic left. And the Republicans, are they really any better? No. Really? I mean, let's not forget that this Ukraine war wouldn't have started if it wasn't for Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell going to Ukraine in 2016 and then talking to Nazis to go invade the Donbass. Mitch McConnell was just seeing Zelensky last year in a delegation with the Republicans. Let's not forget, they're also the Afghan war and the Iraq war Republicans. Let's sanction the hell of the Nicaraguans, Venezuela, and Cuba because they're socialist Republicans. The, let's take on China because of the balloon Republicans. They are, in essence, this, we still remember who you are, Republicans. And yes, Matt Gates is now floating a bill out there to end the Ukraine war, and that's great. You want to end war, so be it. I'm all for it. Frankly, I think you're a little bit too late, because almost a quarter of a million people are dead. But let me just say this to the, uh, the Republicans out there right now. Don't think for one second, for one second, we're, like, we're gonna let you defund the war in Kiev against Moscow, and then take that money over to Taiwan and start another proxy war with Beijing. It's not gonna happen. Did I mention that all wars are bankers wars? So here's my speech, it's all messed up as the wind is blowing, but let me just finish up with this. Let's just ditch it. So this is the hard part, right? We understand what we're up against. We understand that we have no friends here in Washington. So what do we do? What do we do? This hasn't been the first time this has happened before. They had major protests against the Iraq war. They had major protests against Vietnam. But yet, we're back to where we started from. And I know it's kind of trite to say, hey, we gotta come together, but we must. The ruling class has definitely separated us. They got us fighting against each other. So all we can do is get in there and get dirty and have some robust discourse. We gotta cancel, cancel culture. We gotta forget about our isms and talk. We can't play red team, blue team anymore, because if we do, we'll surely die. So I just want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak here today. Remember that all wars are bankers' wars, and let's do the work. Let's come together, let's love, let's fight back, and let's rage against the war machine. Thank you all so much. Up next, we have investigative journalist Wyatt Reed.
Thanks so much for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. What an incredible crowd. You know, it's a beautiful thing to see so many people from so many different walks of life unite today to come out and say it's time for Washington to stop prolonging this war in Ukraine. And it's such an honor to speak alongside so many incredible anti-war figures. People like Dennis Kucinich, Ron Paul, people who've been... Yeah, let's hear it for them. These are people who've been working to bring an end to endless war since before I was born. And today we're here to make sure our kids don't have to do the same thing tomorrow. The thing about war is that in America sometimes it can seem so abstract to us, like it's never hit home here. But it can, and it does. You know, I grew up in southwest Virginia and down the river from the Radford Arsenal where all the propellants used in American rockets and artillery shells are produced. And every month they burn the explosive waste and they dump that sludge into the new river. So when I grew up, we just got used to the fish in the river with tumors that were bigger than their heads. We got used to our dad's buddy dying in unexplained explosions. We got used to our friends getting fired. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
They live right next door. You have, you have more people. They have better industry. They have all the resources. They live right next door. What happened? What happened in Carquis when they had that offensive in, in November or something? And, and it was the man for the like a space there. And the sun was coming in. 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 And the sun was coming in.
But it does weapons be made to end life on earth, and the risk of that is rising. And the only way out of it, the only way out of it, is the abolition of what is this? What does the sign mean? It's Gaddafi. It's to remember the illegal war on Libya in 2011. Oh, is that the, that's the purpose? Yeah.
emergency to use the basic science of human relations, sincere diplomacy, to avoid violent conflict, and is, in fact, unwilling to end conflict peacefully. It's free to town to craft misinformation and disinformation and misuse it as an instrument to incite fear and hatred from our people. Accepting partisan divisions at home to repress politics and stirring ancient acres of art through lies, deceit, false flag operations, and provocations which profane the very essence of democracy.
to use the good to the neighbors, people of Ukraine, as pawns in a vicious and deadly which began well before the illegal force invasion. And it is now planning to do it for the people of Iran what it has done for the people of Ukraine. Portraying China the aggressor while surrounding China with about 200 militaries. At home, our government has supported the which loose the pandemic across the land. They have perverted social media to suppress the German debate over foreign policy to the detriment of the health and welfare of the will of America. And as an airport, our government has been weaponized against the world of opponents and has injected itself into social media organizations to impose political and ideological censorship in a manner characteristic of totalitarian rules, attacking the patriotism of those Americans who dare ask questions. Such a government is neither deserving of the trust of the American people nor worthy of our tacit consent to make decisions in our own interest. The passage of the Declaration of Independence is compelling. That any form of government which will destroy the place as it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute a new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in, in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. We must change this government before it destroys our nation.
go to their cell phones buzzing and ringing, radio alerts blaring, with a message that read ballistic missile threat inbound to Hawaii. Seek immediate shelter. We love your city. This is not a choice. I am so sure that I happen to be here that I have heard calling my friends and calling my family concerned for them and where they were. Just as you here might imagine, we all got that alert at this moment. So too did people all across Hawaii start to ask themselves the question, where is their shelter? Where do I go? Where do I take my children to be safe, knowing that there is an inbound oh, really? missile to Hawaii? With a new year warhead, we have just minutes to live. We had college students at the University of Hawaii sprinting across campus trying to figure out where they could possibly go to get shelter. The father who lowered his little girl down a manhole, <laughs> that may be the only place she may be safe and tell her where to hide. I might not see you again. I heard after her father, who had one kid in town on the island of Oahu, another child on the other side of the island, and himself in the middle trying to decide which of his children he might spend the last of his Minutes ago. Impossible decision for any parent to make. Countless others share their stories of their panic, cowering in the bathtub with their kids, trying to understand. They're telling us to seek immediate shelter. Where do we go? And experiencing that harsh reality that is true for us there in Hawaii in 2018 and it is for us here today. There is no shelter. Our leaders fail us now, and they continue to fail us now. Those people who work in our nation's capital, who will continue to escalate tensions, eagerly wage new cold wars, understanding that there is a nuclear attack, yes, they will be okay in their bunkers where they literally have plans to be able to continue to wage wars from their bunkers without any consideration for the rest of us. And the destruction and incineration that their wars will cause. This is ultimately the thing that caused me to run for president in 2020. I saw where the leaders were taking us. I saw the dangers of where this new Cold War and nuclear arms race would eventually lead. Whether intentional or accidental, there is only one destination for such wars, and that is the nuclear holocaust. I made it clear then that this is a central issue of our time, the most important issue facing us in the 21st century, that there was a clear choice in that election. We were going to work towards peace, de-escalate tensions, move away from this new world war, or we will continue to race gravity towards nuclear war for a new Cold War with Russia, a new Cold War with China, and therefore racing towards the nuclear war. Now, for those of you who remember that election, this issue was not important to the media. They refused to talk about it. They refused to raise the question of debate. There was no other candidate who wanted to talk about this issue. It was not important to them then, and it's not important to them now. And so here we are, two short years later, what I warned about then is now a reality. It's a proxy war that we're fighting against Russia right now. It can turn at any moment into a direct conflict between the United States and Russia, a country that has more nuclear weapons than any other in the world. So anyone who comes to the consensus knows that a cold war can very quickly turn to a hot war. And when you're waging a hot war against a nuclear armed country, it's just a matter of time after we see the And here's the insanity of it all. We have talking heads on TV, we have politicians, we have very powerful people here in the United States and all around the world speaking with a straight face. Well, you know, if we start World War III or when World War III starts, here's how we're going to fight and win. 
that if Putin decides to use tactical nuclear weapons, here's what we're going to do, as though such a war could ever be won. It cannot be won. that we have today. There is no way to win a nuclear war. There is only one end, and that is the nuclear holocaust. So we're gathered here today because we know that it doesn't have to be this way. We know that there is a better way and that the task before us is urgent and necessary. We have people gathered here from all over the country, people who are gathered here from all ends of the political spectrum. And if we were to have a conversation, my guess is there may be other things we don't agree on. But the truth is that we could disagree about everything else. Everything else. But the one thing that we do agree on that brings us together here today is that we value life. We want to live. We want our loved ones to live and thrive. We want to be able to go out on a day like today and walk in the trees and hear the birds chirping with the sun shining down on our face. We understand that whatever our differences may be, that we must stand together as people who cherish peace, security, and freedom. We must set aside our differences, work together to fire those warmongering politicians from both political parties who serve their masters in the military industrial complex instead of serving the people. Those warmongers who carelessly and thoughtlessly are sending us hurtling towards a nuclear holocaust that would destroy all life and the world as we know it. The only way we can stop them is when we stand together and lift our voices in unity, telling them no. We will not let you destroy us. We will not let you destroy our loved ones, our communities, our country, here in the United States and around the world. If we stand together on this one issue, we will be able to wrest the power away from those who don't care about us, those who bend the knee to their overlords in the military industrial complex, take back that power and ensure that we take those trillions of dollars they are feeding into the war machine and instead dedicate those resources towards peace, prosperity, and freedom. We cannot be free and prosperous or safe unless we are at peace. We are the spark that has the power to light that fire to bring about change. So let that spark of love that exists in every single one of our hearts, that aloha, be that inspiration and that fuel that provides us with the courage to fight against these powerful entities, knowing that our cause is just, it is right, and it is necessary. We must work together towards this future in fulfilling and accomplishing this mission of peace. Thank you very much. Aloha. Let's give it up for Congressman Dr. Ron Paul.
say and open up by saying thank you very much. I appreciate the invitation. I like to visit places where I have friends. There are a lot of friends of liberty out here and a lot of friends of peace. So I get energized with coming here. A lot of people give me some credit for coming and helping them along. But the truth is, I get energized. Thank you very much for coming and thank you very much for inviting me. You know, I was going to say that uh, we've heard a, a lot of speeches, a lot of opinions, and everybody has joined in. I didn't hear anybody saying, we need to expand the war. Uh, we're not doing well in, uh, in Ukraine, but we need to take on the Russians. That'll go better. Oh, no, we need to go to China, and we're still struggling in Syria. No, nobody's for that. At least I haven't heard them. They didn't get a place. I hope they didn't ever get, get a place on the platform for that. So this has been, uh, you know, wonderful uh, to uh, come to a place that, 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 that comes together on this issue. But the one thing is that uh, I've emphasized over the years when speaking uh, in a couple of campaigns is that, uh, you know, it's, it's serious. And we just heard this very serious dissertation about how, how serious the problem we deal with. But, you know, with that, Understanding how serious this is, my admonition is always come together and have fun. And I understand a lot of people have been having fun today, meeting new people, and joining. I think that's great. But you know, uh, I also came because uh, I've been concerned, I've been really worried about something. And I haven't figured it out yet. I'm not into technology and all, but I'm, I'm, I want to know more about this thing of called artificial intelligence. What, what is that all about? Well, you know, I figured it out. I put up with it for 23 years in the Congress, and there was a lot of artificial intelligence over there, let me tell you. A lot of innuendos and, and whatnot. But you know, I wanted to simplify my speech, and of course somebody stole my line, but I think that, uh, that we can deal with the war issue very simply. And believe me, and I'll explain it more why I believe this, that the answer is, end the Fed! Woo! here. Thank you. <laughs> no, and it, there's a reason why ending the Fed, Fed is, a, is a, a movement towards stopping these wars. How do they finance them? They have to tax the people. Well, they tax them with income taxes and, and all kinds of taxes, but they never have enough money. They never have enough money, so uh, they have to borrow a lot of money, and then people get tired borrowing the money and loaning the money to the government. So what do they do? They have this little gimmick called run up the debt and print the money. And you know, if, uh, if you're on the side of uh, thinking our government is too big, and as libertarians, we generally think the government is too big all over the place, <laughs> and uh, we'd, like, we'd like to cut back. So if, uh, if you can't print the money, and you can't collect the taxes by debasing the currency and stealing the wealth from the people, unnerving the middle class and the poor, because that's who really pays for this. You couldn't have a war. You couldn't have runaway spending. You couldn't have debts. And we should have it in the Constitution, and Jefferson argued for it. He said that uh, you shouldn't even be allowed to have debt. I think that's a pretty good idea. No debt at all. So that is the way they do it. soften it up and the people go along with it and figure that yes, we, we can do it, but they don't understand uh, what's happening. But why, why do the people go along with it? And uh, we, we have spent a lot of time in, in, over the uh, Mideast Wars trying to stop that war. Uh, I didn't do too well, they still had the war. And it's, uh, it, it's the, they want, they, they, you, you keep wondering, why, why do they do it? Why does the government do it? It doesn't make any sense. Why do the people go to war? You know, one thing I'd like to suggest is 
if we ever got around to thinking that we ought to vote on the wars instead of let an executive order take us to war, we ought to have a vote. If you think you should have a war, have a vote and make sure that the vote is carried out by the people between 18 and 24. That, that is the group that gets punished the most and uh, the others could recreate the war. But, you know, trying to figure still out of that, I thought I'd ask this guy that uh, sort of just helped destroy Germany, uh, Hermann Goring, you remember him. And they, uh, he has a famous quote out there. Why do the people do it? They, and this was after he was convicted in Nuremberg, you know, that he had some interviews. They said, why, why did the people do it? And he, said, he had two things. He says, one, you gotta lie to the people and they have to be big lies. If they're just routine lies, they won't believe it. But if they're so big, it's so outrageous, they'll say nobody could believe that's true, and they wouldn't, they'd ignore it. But tell big lies and tell them off so the people will uh, go along uh, with the war. Yeah, but still, why, why do the people do it and they march off? And uh, even, a lot of the wars start off, people are against the war, World War II, and, and certainly the Middle Eastern wars, the people were opposed to it. But you, and this is Goring, and uh, I'll paraphrase, of course, he says, scare the living daylights out of the people. Tell them they aren't patriotic and they aren't for peace and embarrass them he says it works every time in every system of government in every country. To scare the living daylights out of people. And you know, I think that type of analysis applies to our war, scare the people and patriotism. And I bet you there's many people in this audience that have had to be on the receiving end of that type of thing. Oh, you're not from the war, so you're un-American. And uh, they did that once to me in the campaign. And it turned out, it turned out that they were accusing me of being unpatriotic. I wouldn't support the war. You wouldn't support the troops. But when somebody came up with a statistic, it showed that Ron Paul had the most donations from the military. <laughs> And then I got to thinking, well, why should that be a surprise? I was in the military. They sort of drafted me, and I was in. But the people I knew, they were decent people, and the draft was on at that time. And they, they would say, well, why, uh, why, why are you doing this? And the draft, uh, the draft, of course, uh, has not been used, but there's other ways of doing it. You know, the book should be clean. We should, if we're not for the draft, why, why do we have registration? It, it not, they know where every one of us is. Not, not every year where you sign up with taxes. Every minute of the day, they know where every one of us is, and then they still make us go through the ritual of registering in case there's a war going on. You know, it's psychological preparation for people to know that if you want to be a good citizen and you want to be a patriot, you have to go to the wars. And uh, people, people go along with that. And uh, they, they don't want to be called unpatriotic. And I think we all sense and understand and may have some empathy for that. But it's wrong. It's, it's deception. And uh, it's, it's part of this thing called uh, artificial intelligence. You know, <laughs> they, they, uh, they come in and they, they lie through their teeth. And, uh, it, it, it's all art, artificial, but the artificialness of it, uh, you know, is such that what you hear there, it might be disinformation, and they have to twist it, uh, twist it around. If, if an individual is guilty of uh, disinformation, have you ever noticed they might blame their opposition for doing exactly what they're doing? And, you know, they reverse it, and uh, so there's a lot of fake grief. This gets done to the whole issue of uh, seeking truth in the big picture. We seek truth as we come to uh, events like this and we run for office and we write and talk and, and so many people here have their own way of spreading a message. So uh, yes, that, 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 that is real good. Uh, but what we need though is uh, some people really understanding the issues because uh, that is what will finally uh, get
get people to change their minds rather than waiting. You know, one of the lines that uh, was helpful for me in the campaigning, they would say, yeah, Ron, that's okay. We want, we want, we're with you on this, but it's so complicated. Well, how do you stop these wars? And I said, you just marched in, we can just march home. But now I've changed that a little bit. It, we shorten that. We have to anticipate. Just don't send them in at all. You know, uh, there's such a fallacy, and this is part of, part of the propaganda thing, that is so necessary, not for patriotic reasons, but, but for other reasons. And, and there, as there's always an excuse. Yeah, the one that annoys me the most, or at least close to the most, is this argument. They'll say, well, we need a good war right now. We're having a recession. Have a war and we'll get out of the recession. And this is a lingering of a foolhardy idea that the World War II got us out of the Great Depression. That's stupid. It wasn't true at all. The depression got worse. Besides, we sent hundreds of thousands of people over getting shot at and killed. And they say, oh, the war is good. That will get us out of, out of our depression. So there's all kinds of excuses like that. And they don't mention the many things that have already been mentioned at this conference, that, that there's ulterior motives and, uh, and you know, like profits. And uh, we're getting getting to many of these special groups like the military industrial complex we have the pharmaceutical industrial complex the medical industrial complex and the whole work what we need to do is have a people's uh, independence and they're they're the ones who should be looked at and you know another another little rule that i think we should follow is that uh and this is one word i like to narrow down my philosophy and uh, the other word that I like is volunteerism. Wouldn't that be a wonderful world to live in that if you apply volunteerism, which is nonviolent, and uh, you have volunteerism, what, well, what do you mean? Does that mean you can go to the store and buy what you want? No, volunteer means that everything is done when it involves two groups or two people voluntarily. Both sides have to agree. Otherwise, you avoid it. You can't force anybody to do anything. And you know what would happen? Peace would break out. So therefore, you have to have the hoodlums up there making it so that that, that, that it's not voluntary, and if somebody gets to write a lot of regulations, and they get to do all the nonsense they do, and then they bank, and then, then they bankrupt the country. So that's the uh, that, that's the problem. I think volunteerism is is uh, just a, a great idea, and uh, the other, the other thing is is. Uh, when, when government comes to knocking on your door, uh, that is the tough thing. And they will tell you that you have to on the side of truth and the side of democracy and, and all these things. I work on the assumption of the issue of truth, I think, is very, very important. That's what we're seeking here. That's why you're here. But we know the truth. We, Generally agree with pieces good and worse bad. So we're pretty good on that. But uh, we have to uh, realize that a lot of other people, you know, uh, you, you know, have to say that uh, a lot, a lot of other people don't 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 know much about it. I uh, have a personal belief that we as individuals also, ex uh, you know, seek for excellence and virtue. We've got to accept volunteerism, we accept this virtue, what would happen with that? If that happened, the government would be minuscule, and they would be much better, and maybe a little more virtuous. Thank you very much. Ron Paul! Thank you so much, Dr. Paul. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Our last closing video is a video sent specially to us by Roger Waters, international rock icon. And right after that, we're going to be marching to the White House. We've got Let's roll it. speakers at the White House, too. Welcome! I have just
to shout because I'm in Switzerland. Can you hear me? Okay. When I was a young man, my mother once told me this. Roger, throughout your life, you will be faced with many difficult questions and quandaries. My advice to you, when you are, is this. Read, read, read. Listen to all sides of the argument, especially from those you don't always agree with. Research thoroughly. When you have, you will have done all the heavy lifting. The next bit is easy. So what is the next bit, Mum? Then you just do the right thing. The invasion of Ukraine by the Russian Federation was illegal. I condemn it in the strongest possible terms. Also, the Russian invasion of Ukraine was not unprovoked. So I also condemn the provocateurs in the strongest possible terms. So, on behalf of the silent majority, I now address President Biden. Let us be very clear, Mr. President. I speak for the voiceless majority. You, and Anthony Blinken and Victoria Newland and Jake Sullivan and the rest of the warmongering neocons at the heart of government here in Washington, along with the vassal states in NATO, are the principal provocateurs that I mentioned. I'm not apologizing for Mr. Putin, you understand, but just a glance fleetingly back at the history of the last 30 years or so. You could have done better. You could have followed President Gorbachev's lead in 1989. You could have kept Secretary of State Baker's promise not to advance NATO one yard closer to the Russian border than the eastern extremities of a reunited Germany. You could have responded to President Putin's overtures in his famous 10th of February 2007 speech at the security conference in Munich and shepherded us all towards a much, much safer Europe. Or, in 2008, you could have chosen not to expand NATO or in 2014, you could have refrained from engineering the illegal maiden coup d'etat in Ukraine. Or, in 2019, you could have supported the Minsk Accords. Now, we're told by Angela Merkel, they were just a ruse to buy time to arm Ukraine for the war that you were engineering. But they were also, the Minsk Accords that is, the platform that President Zelensky ran on during his presidential campaign. Well, you fooled me, President Zelensky. I thought you meant all that stuff about ending the civil war in the Donbass and giving Russia a neighbor some security issues. I thought you were so in 2022, February, March, and April, you could have told Boris Johnson not to fly to Kiev to scupper the peace negotiations that you chose not to. And then, in September 2022, according to the Come on now. Uh, we've had enough. We want to hear the music. Yeah, but we want to sing along. Why should he be the only Legend. one? Because he's on video. Street. Give us a song. No, no Releasing as it did 300,000 tons of methane into the atmosphere over the Baltic Sea. First you, Mr. President, 
boasted openly about your intention and ability to do it. And then recently, Victoria Newland boasts about how pleased she is that it's a quite hunk of junk that I to see. And as Lincoln boasts, how perfectly its destruction suits the US imperial agenda. And now, to cap it all off, you have your idiot mouthpiece, Nick Price, deny that the USA had anything to do with it. We have heard no statement from you, Mr. President. There is no mainstream media coverage. I guess you and mainstream media think
Yeah, but the bus is leaving soon. I yeah. know where they left this off. Wow. Right? Actually, he's going to take you to the White House on the bus. Oh. Come on, right. Brother, thank you for being here. Thank you. You waited a line for a long time, and then you have like punch cards. Actually, so they give you your ration, and then. Not one penny more for my practical. 
they're like, oh no, did you hear he broke every bone in his body? Yeah, fucking motorcycle crash was horrible. That's what out, I want to hear. You turned out the boot wasn't there. Yeah, seriously. Yes, <laughs> he fell off the back. Oh, don't tell me that thing slid down in his eyes and he fucking hit a curb at the baby. Travelers have rights. project and didn't even know it, bro. Yeah, I know, right?
Stop the wars, disband NATO, free Assange, don't listen to Cato. <laughs> Proxy war. This is just torture. What's torture? My doctors put me on a no beef diet. That's what I am. No, we're the left, we're the right. We've come together because this is a more important issue to the party. Like, I really don't People's Party is left leaning populist. That's what I think my mom is. Check us out. Party.org. Right? So now I try to start a show with these guys. Before I did the show with Steve, I was trying to let other eight. Now I want to start another show. And I was like, I got radio right here. <laughs> But, you know, I ended up in a good spot. Oh, man. I ended up in a good spot. Yeah. Yeah. Stop the wars. This man NATO. Free his signs. Don't listen to Kato.
Video footage is going to be here. So if you can use, you can, um, I'm going to, sorry, Kendo. It's all right. I'm going to video footage like a day or so. Gotcha. You can, use, you can use whatever you want. Oh man, that's awesome. Can I contact you through there? Yeah, my email's on the uh, website. Perfect. You can remember pasta? Yeah, no, I know who you are. Gotcha. What's your, what's your email? Uh, is the combo couch at gmail.com or okay. Craig Jardula at gmail.com. Okay, cool. But the combo couch at gmail.com is easy to remember. Uh, the yeah. combo couch at gmail.com. Yeah. I'll send you a link. The combo there. couch. The combo couch. Yes. At gmail.com. I'll yes. send you a link just to remind you. Please do, man. I got your stuff done. Who's good at civics? Definitely. Who's in the uh, executive office? What's that? I'm just wondering who's in the executive office right now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, who knows? Who's He was gonna. He was doing his after.
Oh, my anarchist, by the way. Johnny Mac, can you Coming, coming. <laughs> Afghanistan. And the thing about Afghanistan was besides the storm hurting the country invading Afghanistan, it was really bad for Afghani people. I don't want the Ukrainian people to suffer what the people in Afghanistan have suffered under an imperial regime going in and destroying lives. Because a long progressed war, this long drawn out thing that NATO wants to in Ukraine, means fighting house to house, destroying civilians destroying infrastructure, turning this country back by tens or hundreds of years of progress. And I don't want to see that to happen. If you want to stand with Ukrainians, don't wage a war inside of Ukraine. What Russia is doing is wrong, but the U.S. was the one that said that we should both stop. We need to negotiate for peace now. End the war. Bring the troops home. institutions that have a monopoly on force that will use it to, against you, your family, and people around the world. Your enemy is right there! Woo! 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 <laughs> <laughs> 
Somebody in the White House over there is taking note. Yeah. So well, let the old I, man uh, know that there's a lot of people out there Musk today who like want talks kind of now, ceasefire now. Involved or at least um, supportive. I think that might have been a smoke. <laughs> yeah. Somebody should tell his chief of staff. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm writing a book called Provoked, How America Started the New Cold War and the Catastrophe in Ukraine. And it's still going to be a few months now, but it should be like a comprehensive view of all this over the last 30 years, how America restarted the Cold War. Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. John Morgan, you say? Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Great. Nice to meet you. Appreciate that very much. Great event today, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm really impressed by it. Oh, Mercy in the end of the movie. Yeah. It's a good start. It was really fun. I was talking to all the members of the party because I asked to seek out the They can't fuck with him, right? If he comes in there, I know you already. So, all right. What's your name? Norm. Norm. Okay. Did we haven't met before? Oh, okay. All right. Well, nice to see you. A four. Ten million. Oh, okay. Okay. And they want to spy on us. What do they do? It was nice to meet you. Ah, one more time. Say to me. Yes, um, you know, um, 
Aisha Juman, I'm sorry, I don't remember the names of all the fucking people, but Aisha Juman from the Yemen uh, Relief Foundation, if you just email her, get in touch with her, she'll put you on the email list for all these guys. They do a, uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> they, they do um, a conference call, I forget, I think it's the second Thursday of every month or some shit like that. And anyway, so the game for this March 1st is they have a whole list in every state of recalcitrant Democrats who don't support the Yemen War Powers Resolution. And so I'm going to, I don't even know which congressman, they're sending me fucking What's somewhere. A and I'm, we're bringing a bunch of people and we're going to one congressman's office to tell him. These other Democrats are gay. Um, I tried to interview a guy about this on Friday, but he had terrible background noise, so we had to like put it off. But he had written this thing for Anaheim.com about how um, I don't know if the backstory here is right. But what he said was that the Houthis opened up a notebook and showed the Saudis how they had already pre-targeted all of these things all around Riyadh with all these drones and all the fire. And they were like, in other words, we got a gun to your head right now. Like, you didn't know it, but it's caught. And then the Saudis took it that seriously. It's almost like the fact that they had marginalized this group. They had appointed to replace Hadi. And now the Saudis are dealing directly with the Houthis for the first time in eight years. Good. It's just the two of them talking. The United Nations is not involved. The Americans are not involved. And fucking the UAE and this ruling council bullshit is not involved. It's just, it's just been Salman's men in it. So, and, and the Houthis are demand. All they want is a fucking peace deal. They're not. You know what I mean? They want the, 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 the their only stipulation is they want all the back salaries paid, which the fucking Saudis can do with one day worth of revenue. It's gonna be shit. That's nothing to them, right? So, yes, absolutely. And you know what? When the fucking U.S. Senate passed the War Powers Resolution in 2019, fucking the next day, I think, maybe two days later, the Crown Prince of UAE sent his man to fucking Tehran to meet with the fucking Ayatollah. And then, and like a week later, or a few weeks later, the Saudis sent their men to Baghdad to meet with the Iranians. Because this, because the Americans were backing off, and they were like, oh shit, without, I mean, think about it, dude. It's like a, it's like a fifth grade bully with a big, tough eighth grade brother who knows that he can get away with murder because his older brother's gonna back him up, right? But if older brother says, actually, I don't fucking have your back on this one, bratty kid. You're gonna have to take your lumps. He's gonna change his attitude really quick. And that's exactly the dynamic here. So seriously, you know what? I mean, this is an important question because they always portray it like if America wasn't holding the whole world down, it would all break out into flames. But actually, if you look where we back off, people start talking and making deals. It's not like it's ironclad. But it sure is not ironclad the other way either. Like you know? Yeah, well, it's uh, worse. Estonia, Estonia starting to mouth off about Russia right now. Like, well, no right. shit. You, like, exactly. Like if the U.S. wasn't standing well, right they behind wouldn't him, dare. They, 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 That's they, they, right. They, yeah, exactly. I'm not right. defending right. him. I'm not saying he's a great guy, yeah. but Kasim Soleimani, I think, was trying to talk to the Saudis about Well, that was why they killed him. I mean, he was the reason he was in Iraq was to meet with, I forgot exactly who, but it was some Saudi to, guy. Yeah it was, yeah, it was to meet with a Saudi ambassador or somebody. And, um, and then they made up a story. Oh, he killed a lot of people. Who, who did he kill? And then he got all Trump's people. Like, yeah, we got him. I'm like, what was the point? Of this? Like, we weren't even fighting Iran. We're not at war with Iran. Yep. And look how many people cheered for that when they just heard of the guy for the first time in their yeah, lives. Like, he killed like, a lot of people. That must have been important to do, or Trump wouldn't have done it. You know? Yeah. And there's people. Oh, okay. Not like that. <laughs> 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 
their homes taking more things across town at the same time they raided the homes and offices of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement a white organization we created to organize white people for reparations and true solidarity with the African liberation struggle they did this because of an indictment they created which they say proves we are Russian agents the, they provided so-called evidence that they say proves the programs that we created and the electoral races we've entered using the slogans reparations to African community and unity through reparations are indeed because the Russians told us to do it. How ridiculous. Fuck the FBI. Do you know what country we live in? Do you know what country we live in? Do you know the legacy of violence and oppression doled out to African people who have only wanted to be free in this country since it was first established? The Uhuru movement wants to be free. The colonizers, the people who run this country, believe that this is a threat. That is why they created this ridiculous indictment and have the audacity to say that the reason we build is because of Russians and not because we are responding to the U.S. colonial oppression that we face since the settler colony was founded. We are in the fight to defend our movement against impending indictments, but more than that, we are in a struggle to defend our fight for freedom. We have created the Hands Off Uhuru, Hands Off Africa campaign that has won international support for our struggle and exposes the FBI's legacy of subversion, particularly as it applies to African freedom struggles. And I want to be clear. Oh, was on my show. I used to have a YouTube channel during COVID, but again, he was on gas. I did it. That's right. That's right. Uh, I find that's, uh, I find that's, 
definition of the United States Congress. So, all this to say, you know, our government tries to gaslight us into thinking that, you know, the January 6th protesters were the biggest, scariest thing that's ever happened, and they've been escalating us toward World War III. This war didn't start in 2022 with Putin just deciding he wanted to go into Ukraine. This has been provoked for years with coups, with dumping billions of dollars of weapons into Ukraine and surrounding countries. So that's all I got to say. Your government sucks. They don't spend your money on protecting you or making your life better. Taxation is theft. Free the, uh, free the January 6th protesters.
This way, once we gain the majority, we can then appoint new people into the seats. These are just some of the actions I worked for. One of the, one of the other actions I, I represent is the ability to create our own communication system. So that way we don't have to trust in the media. Communication won by the people. I have been a technician for over 20 plus years. I've seen many technologies. These technologies can be used by us because they're being used against us. Blockchain technology, decentralized currency, and AI are the path that we can take to gain power again. I am right now working on a decentralized communication platform, similar to Wormble and other types like that, that again, run by decentralized organization based on blockchain technology. I ask all of you together for this last time to stop and really think inside and look inside yourselves and then look at each other and see what's really important. We are all people, we're all human beings. That's what's important. We must treat each other like human beings and we must respect the planet as human beings. Our job was fundamentally to take care of this planet not to change it and each other, not to make a simulation that we live in just to satisfy our own pleasures. Thank you very much. Have a good day. How are we doing, everybody? I've worked in artificial intelligence. I've, I now work in finance as of today, probably not anymore. I am telling you that all of our demands, no more money for the Ukraine war, to negotiate peace and call for a ceasefire immediately, that to stop the war inflation, that to disband NATO, to de-escalate the nuclear situation globally, to slash the Pentagon budget, to abolish the Mickey Mountain CIA, to reduce foreign empire, to restore our civil liberties, and to free Julian Assange, what we need is a leader. And so today I announce to you my candidacy, POTUS, as a leader, independent for this group. And I hope to convince you guys, everybody, I want to be the POTUS that Nick believes in. I want to be the POTUS that Matt's women that believes in. I want to be the POTUS Am I perfect? No, I'm just a man. But I'm here today because I believe in this anti-war movement, and I'm proud that everybody else is here. I hope they do not work. I am going to continue this fight. I come from the Southwest. I'm going to talk about the indigenous people. I grew up right across the mountains from the Apache, the Indian. How many treaties did we break against the Indians? About against the Navajo, the Dene. I, I tell you guys to show that I'm real about this. I'm going to walk from D.C. to the Four Corners. That's part of my campaign trail, a real campaign trail. I'm Clayton Wrestler. It is. It's, my, it's been my pleasure. Well, I suggest Hey, I saw Daniel the Cedar out there. Are you still out there, Daniel? Still out there? Yeah. <laughs>